When heaven promises refuge to us in this present storm, what does that mean? For scripture appears to be contradictory. Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on earth. But then it says, Also, it was allowed to make war on the saints and to conquer them, and authority was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation. Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. And then we read, But the woman was given the two wings of the great eagle, so that she might fly from the serpent into wilderness, to the place where she is to be nourished for a time, and times, and half a time. Revelation chapter 12, verse 14. And yet, other passages speak of a time of chastisement which does not discriminate. Behold, the Lord will empty the earth and make it desolate, and he will twist its surface and scatter its inhabitants. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priests, as with the slave, so with his master, and as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, and as with the creditor, so with the debtor. Isaiah chapter 24 verses 1 to 2. So, what does the Lord mean when he says that he will keep us safe? Christ's bride is promised spiritual protection first and foremost. That is, protection against evil, temptation, deceit, and eventually hell. It is also divine support given in the midst of adversity through the Holy Spirit's gifts of wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and fortitude. Psalm chapter 91 verse 15. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. We are pilgrims. This is not our permanent residence. While some people are granted bodily protection to assist them achieve their mission here on earth, it is meaningless if the soul is lost. A tsunami of lies is soon to be released on our globe, and a wave of spiritual ruin has already begun. It will be an attempt to offer peace and stability to the globe without the presence of Christ. Every time the claim is made to fulfill within history that messianic promise, that can only be realized beyond history via the eschatological judgment, the Antichrist's deceit begins to take shape in the world. As the light of truth is extinguished in the world, it burns stronger and brighter in those souls who say yes to Jesus, yes to the Spirit who calls for deeper and greater surrender. I personally believe that this is a time of the ten virgins, a time to fill our lamps with graces in preparation for the approaching trial. That is why our Blessed Mother has dubbed this period the moment of grace. Please do not take these words lightly. You must clean up your spiritual home. There isn't much time left. You must ensure that you are in a condition of grace, that is that you have repented of any grievous sin and have set your path on the way, that is, God's will. When I say very little time, I may be referring to hours, days, or even years. How much time will it take us to convert? Certain individuals say that Mary has appeared in some areas for over 25 years, which they believe is excessive. I can only pray God would let her live another 50 years. One of the reasons God is asking us to be in a state of grace 
is because there are events on the horizon in which souls will be called home in the blink of an eye. Chastisements that will transport countless souls to their everlasting destiny. Is this making you nervous? Why? Brothers and sisters, if a comet is on our way, I hope it hits me in the head. If an earthquake occurs, may it swallow me up. I'm ready to go home, but only till my task is completed. And so it is with you that Our Lady has been working for months and years. You are on a goal of bringing souls into the kingdom, and the gates of hell will not stand in your way. Are you not a part of the church, a living stone in this heavenly temple? Then the gates of hell will not prevail against you until your mission is completed. Thus, there will be some physical protection for the holy ones during the upcoming trials allowing the church to continue her work. As you walk among chaos, wonderful miracles will begin to become commonplace. From the multiplication of food, to the healing of bodies, to the casting out of evil spirits. In these days, you shall know God's power and might. Satan's dominance will be limited. Even demons are checked by good angels, so they do not cause as much havoc as they could. Similarly, the Antichrist will not cause as much destruction as he would want. There will also be physical refuges, places set apart by God where the believers will receive heavenly protection, even from the powers of evil, according to scripture and many mystics. When the angel Gabriel told Joseph to send Mary and Jesus to Egypt, to the desert of safety, this set a precedent. For example, St. Paul seeking sanctuary on an island, following a shipwreck or being set free from jail by angels. These are only a handful of numerous stories of God's bodily protection of his children. Who can forget the modern day Japanese miracle of Hiroshima? Eight Jesuit priests escaped the atomic bombing of their city. They live barely eight blocks away from their home. A half million people annihilated around them, but the priests all survived. The local church was entirely demolished, but the home they were staying at was only slightly damaged. We believe we survived because we were living the Fatima message. In that house, we lived and said the rosary every day. They were in fact in the ark. Another case in point is the village of Medjugorje. The communist police attempted to arrest seers on one occasion during the early years of the alleged apparitions there. But when they came to Apparition Hill, they walked right by the children who seemed invisible to the authorities. During the Balkan War, Reports emerged that attempts to bomb the village and the church had miraculously failed. Then there's the wonderful story of Immaculé Ilibagiza, who survived the 1994 Rwandan genocide. She and seven other ladies hid in a tiny bathroom for three months, which the bloodthirsty horde missed despite searching the house numerous times. Where are these safe zones? I'm not sure. Some claim to know. All I know is that if God wants me to find one, and I am praying and listening, my heart full of faith, he will take care of everything. His holy will's road leads to his holy will. 
Before Christ's second coming, the church must endure a final test that will challenge many Christians' faith. As Catholics, we must be careful not to invent our own version of the erroneous idea of a rapture, a type of earthly escape from all suffering. That is, we cannot run away from the cross, which is the straight path by which we enter eternal life. War, starvation, plagues, earthquakes, persecution, false prophets, an antichrist. All of these eschatological tribulations that must come to purify the church and the earth will shake believers' faith but not destroy it in those who have sought refuge in the ark. For the Almighty does not absolutely seclude the saints from his temptation, but shelters only their inner man, where faith resides, that by outward temptation they may grow in grace. In fact, It is faith which will eventually conquer the powers of darkness and usher in a period of peace, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the triumph of the Church. 1 John 5, verse 4 For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. More than anything, we must light our lamps with faith, absolute faith in God's providence and love. Who knows exactly what we need, when we need it, and how? Why do you believe the faithful's tribulations have escalated so dramatically in recent years? I believe it is God's hand assisting his small ones to first empty of self, then fill their lamps, at least those who have embraced these challenges, even though we opposed at first. This faith is the foundation of our hope, the proof of things unseen, especially when we are surrounded by the darkness of tribulations. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 The Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 18 Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them on the day of the wrath of the Lord. In the fire of his jealousy, all the earth shall be consumed. For a full and sudden end, he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. Psalm chapter 34, verse 22. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those take refuge in him will be condemned.